Welcome into our home. Uh, we're here for our family devotion. I hope that you guys get a lot out of this. Uh, this is, uh, we don't necessarily always use this format, but this is the one we've been using. So happy to have you guys here and kind of uh, get a look at what we do. And hopefully you guys can kind of learn to copy it in, in your own houses uh, and, you know, do it whenever you please. It doesn't always have to be just to our video, but we're following the Faith 5 uh, formats, right? So we use uh, share, read, talk, pray, bless. We've been doing this for a couple weeks now. Share, read, talk, pray, bless. I hope you guys are kind of getting the hang of it. Uh, maybe even after we're all let back out into the world and we can go and explore and most importantly go to church. Uh, even after that, maybe you guys can continue on doing this. Um, so kind of excited uh, to see how that works out. But for now, we'll just go ahead and jump right in, I think, right? So we'll start with share. Uh, you kind of were still thinking about yours. Do you want me to jump right in with mine and then you can go? Sure. All right. So for me, my high and low, uh, we have the the low and high are, are kind of the same thing. So Bella, just recently, I was actually in the restroom and... Uh, I hear the, the doorknob is kind of jiggling in the door, right? And lo and behold, you know, after I'm, I finish up, you know, wash my hands and everything. Wash your hands, it's important because there's a pandemic going on. Uh, but uh, wash my hands, you know, come on out of the bathroom and, and check and I see, man, oh man, that was Bella. And uh, so kind of a good thing because it's like, oh, she's growing up and it's always amazing to, to see all these milestones that she hits and is able to do new things and be more independent and of course... You know, that's the goal of childhood is eventually to, you know, grow up to be a mature Christian adult, right? That's the point of childhood. Uh, so, of course, we want her to grow up, and that's wonderful and fun. Uh, but on the other hand, we probably are going to have to get, like, those doorknobby things uh, that, that stop the babies from, like, opening all the doors, like, for instance, while you're in the restroom. Uh, and those are just annoying. So that's kind of my low. So high and low. That's, you know, cool that she's growing up and becoming independent. Low, I probably now have to buy these doorknob things. Mm -hmm. So it'll be all good. Yeah, it'll, it'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I guess my low this week, actually, Ow! at the time that we're recording this, last week was just my low. It was just a bad week all the way around. It was just, it was a rough week. Just a tough week, yeah. Um, but my high. Uh, is that I am officially, I guess, an entrepreneur. Uh, I officially registered my publishing imprint, and that is pretty exciting. I am very excited about that, and that is absolutely it's hard to top that high right now. Yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We've got like a company name and like everything, and we're like ready to go. We're gonna like open up bank accounts and stuff. It's gonna be cool. Yeah. So I'm 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 excited about that too. But I wanted to let Maddie have that be her high. But we're pretty excited about the whole thing. So um, very exciting stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so at this point in our video, right, this is where we want you guys to participate amongst yourselves. So like I said, my goal of showing this video and using this method is so that you guys can copy this in your homes and in your houses whenever you want. So I want you guys to take a moment to pause our video and share your highs and lows amongst your family. Make sure your family's all there. Share your highs and lows together. That's share. Go ahead and pause that video now. And welcome back. Uh, yeah, that sharing highs and lows, I find it's interesting how you can live together, live in, in the same house, in the same place, and not even necessarily know what's going on with everybody in the family, you know? Um, so really glad to be able to offer you guys the opportunity to be able to do that. And remember, you guys can do it literally whenever you want. Um, so, <laughs> this is, uh, so this is just a, a reminder of that. So let's go ahead and jump right to read. Okay, so this is, uh, we've been using our Sunday school lessons as kind of the where we get our readings from. Uh, if you guys at home wanted to say, hey, you know what, uh, Sunday school lessons are cool, but I have this really impactful verse that I noticed and want to read to my family today, then pause the video now and go ahead and show, and go ahead and read that and talk about that. And that's great. There's no intrinsic value to... Uh, reading it specifically in the order that I'm doing. So uh, I'm just choosing that based on our, our Sunday school lessons. So um, so feel free to do that if you want. But for now, we're going to go ahead and read all about the Philippian jailer. 
uh, which is a story with Saul and Paul. Last week we talked about the conversion, right, from Saul to Paul. So he's Paul now. Uh, And this can be found in Acts 16, uh, verses 16 to 40. So it's kind of a chunk of text, Acts 16, verses 16 to 40. Uh, So we'll go ahead and just jump right in. So this is Paul and Silas. As we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bonds were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in the house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. But when it was day, the magistrates sent the police saying, Let those men go. And the jailer reported these words to Paul, saying, The magistrates have sent to let you go. Therefore, come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned men who are Roman citizens, and have thrown us into prison. And do they now throw us out secretly? No, let them come themselves and take us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates, And they were afraid when they heard that they were Roman citizens. So they came and apologized to them, and they took them out and asked them to leave the city. So they went out of the prison and visited Lydia. And when they had seen the brothers, they encouraged them and departed. All right, so we're going to pause. If you're uh, still still with us, if you decided to go ahead and listen to us read uh, this section, then, then wonderful. Go ahead and pause the video now, though, and take some time to talk with your family about whatever stood out to you. Go ahead and pause that video. Welcome back. Okay, we're so glad that you guys uh, are still with us here. We're going to go ahead and share a little bit of our conversation and what we talked about. There is so much in this text. There's a lot of things that you can talk about here. Uh, so don't like feel bad like, oh, I missed the main point. No, no, no. no. This is, there, it's not the main point. This is a narrative. There is no main point. This is a story about what Paul and Silas did. So, uh, you know, just talk about whatever came up with you. But these are the things that we talked about a little bit and that we kind of noticed. Um, we're going to start by talking about uh, demons, actually. So it's kind of right at the beginning. You see that, uh, that spirit of divination. And this can be confusing sometimes for people. Um, Oh, no. It's gone forever. It's gone forever. Uh, so um, this demon, uh, the spirit of divination, actually the Greek culture 
Uh, you, what were they called? The so Pythia? What she is right there in the Greek, she had the spirit of Pythia. And specifically what that's talking about is actually something in a different location um, at where there was something called the Oracle of Delphi, which is basically there was just this woman and she, uh, you know, gave prophecies is what it was. Well, yeah. so what we would say is that most of the people were possessed by right, demons. Yes. And that's obviously yes. Paul here encounters this girl and they have this, she had this power, but it, was, it wasn't from God. And right. obviously, you know, he does a good deed by casting the demon out of her, but that's what it, it was. It, it was yeah. actually a specific thing that the Greek text lets us know what it was that, that Paul was dealing with. Anytime we talk about demons, I always say uh, a, a few things. And one is, is there's two places that you can get power, and there is power in both places, right? Um, and one, the first, the one we, you know, recommend is God. Right, you can get power from God, right? And we see that in this text too yeah. about the earthquake, and all of a sudden, all the prisoners are released, mm-hmm. and the transformative, this transformative power of the gospel yeah. that transforms this jailer's life, you and know, his and, and his and spirit, and, and his. right, and the and the ability to be at peace, uh, even though you're in jail, which is where a lot of people would would despair and be in depression, right? Um, so there is power from God, but. You know, let's not try to completely ignore that there's there's also power to be found uh, from, you know, the other place, which would be not God, right? So there's God and then there's not God. So when you get power from not God, that's always bad, right? Um, in this case, um, this is a demon. Um, and, and so providing some sort of spiritual power. So she apparently uh, is making these, these prophecies and they appear to be true prophecies. She's making them and, and succeeding. Um, so there is power there. Yeah, at least they're making money from it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, I guess. Um, another thing to understand too is is uh, about demons that demons it often will take the shape of uh, whatever is the current kind of cultural supernatural phenomenon, right? So a lot of times it's it's aliens or it's uh, ghosts or you know in the Middle Ages we had like fairies and goblins and such, you know, and and uh, so you know those are demons. Um, so it's the, it's the power that's not God, right? Um, and those things are not necessarily to be dismissed. Um, so let's not completely ignore it. Let's not pretend like it doesn't happen. Um, it clearly does. But, right, the important thing to understand is that God is, is sovereign over that, right? God is greater. The power of God is, is more and better than, than any power from any demon. So, uh, in this case, Paul releases and frees this young slave girl. Uh, this young slave girl frees her from her, her spiritual bonds. Uh, and we don't find out anything about her, her you know, physical bonds in terms she's a slave girl, right? The owners. Uh, this is a slave. Um, and so we don't find out if that frees her from that. But the owners uh, are at least not going to be making any money uh, anymore from that. So... So that's a good thing. Um, that's kind of demons. The second thing I want to talk a little bit about uh, that kind of popped out at us is this idea of prosperity gospel. Um, and, you know, it seems like in this text, it almost could lend itself to that a little bit. Um, this idea that, you know, uh, Paul does this good thing. right. Paul does this good thing and he's listening to God and he's singing hymns and praying. And because of that, God rescues him. Um, and the reason prosperity gospel tends to kind of seep in a little bit is because it's kind of true, sort of, but the problem is, is most of the time when God rescues you, it's actually like after death, right? So like, so like you die and then you go to heaven. And so, yes, ultimately God is going to rescue us, uh, all of us from, you know, from eternal death. For, from eternal death, right? Absolutely. So God definitely does rescue us, and there's a lot of language that it sounds like in the Bible where it talks about that. Um, but in terms of like on earth physical things happening, that's where God talks about. Well, He makes it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous, uh, both, right? And at the time, rain is actually a blessing. So He's saying, "I bless unrighteous people, and I also bless righteous people." I will say for most of us, that's good news because we're kind of all unrighteous people. Um, but this idea of prosperity gospel, like Paul and Silas are somehow rescued, uh, from their bonds. Um, 
I think even first, you, you know, they do this good thing for this slave girl. Right. And then they get beaten. They they get beaten up. Yeah. And then, you know, they get thrown in prison. Right. And I... And so here they are in prison. Immediately. Yeah. And, well, they're not freed at all. Yeah. Right? I mean, so, I, like, uh, here's this earthquake and this whole thing. They actually don't get out of prison. They're still in prison. Right? And a lot of people will read this and say, oh, well, when he's converting the the jailer they're out of prison but you'll realize no actually they're not right it's not till the next day the next morning that the magistrates kind of cave and and let them go realizing oh we really don't have uh any any like crime that they could be you know tried like, oh, for so we have to wasn't a good idea right so we have to sort of <laughs> let them yeah that's another example right another thing to talk about mob rule right um so they let them go and and that's the whole thing so they actually are not freed they get beaten and uh, you know, pretty severely too, you yeah. know, and, and thrown in the stocks. Um, so, uh, you know, and I would say anybody that likes the prosperity gospel, I would say, Hey, you know, there was one perfect person that lived, uh, on the earth and, you know, they crucified him. So it's hard to call that prosperity gospel yeah. in that sense. Now, again, after death, right, you see Jesus is resurrected and he's brought yeah. back. Yes. God rescues us after death, right? <laughs> Ultimately, that's 100% and he does true. bless those who follow his commands. Absolutely. And God, you know, has sovereign power that he works all things for the good uh, of those who love him, who are called um, by his, his, according to his purpose. According to his purpose, exactly. So that's that's a, a Bible verse in Romans, and we see that. Um, and that's but certainly also, true, too. We're going to hit rough times. Absolutely, right. Um, it, you know, God allowed his own son to be killed on the cross uh, in order to save the world. And he might allow some suffering of Christians in order to save uh, even just one soul. So yeah, keep that in mind when we talk here. about prosperity. Yeah, we absolutely see here, right? Um, yeah. In order to save the jailer, God allowed Paul and Silas to be beaten and thrown in prison. Yeah. <laughs> All right, or so, rather uh, he allowed you know, them being thrown into prison to still be used for his good. Still be used for, yeah, his good. And ultimately, Paul and Silas is good too. I think Paul and yeah. Silas would say, hey, that actually ultimately was good for me. Um, in, in a way, you know, Paul talks about God being made stronger in his weakness. And, yeah. and so we have to look at that and just say, you know, prosperity gospel, uh, let's try to stay away from that. Right. That's that's a, a, a thing that we need to watch out for. Um, but uh, the next thing we really talked about, Maddie's very musically inclined. Uh, so, you know, she kind of glommed on right to that that hymns section where we talk where Paul and Silas are singing hymns. Yeah. Always very interesting. It's just it's just a beautiful picture. Um, it actually reminds me of a a book I read a long time ago called Pilgrim's Progress. And there's a couple different points in it where it's um, they're in the pit of despair, or the slough of despond, and later as they go through it, you know, I I see that in here where they're in this dungeon, they're beat up, they're they're tired, they're worn, and they're singing to God. You know, they're, they're, you know, we don't know all that, that they're singing, but there are these songs that they have in their hearts and in their minds that they know where they don't have words to look at or, right. or you know, something to look up online. They just have this in their heart where in these times of trouble, they have this comfort. You know, it's, it's the scripture put to music or uh, teaching hymns that they have that, you know, it still instructs them and encourages them throughout what they're doing. Um, and what they're enduring, and I, I love that picture. I, I mean, yeah. I've seen lots of pictures of, of Paul and Silas in the jail and singing, and you can kind of like see like the other prisoners like watching them. Like, what are these people doing? Right. You know, it's such and it's such a witness. It's not just encouraging to to us and to Paul and Silas, um, but it's encouraging to the people around us where we're in these times of trouble. And it's not like we're saying everything's fantastic. That's not what Paul and Silas are saying. But it's like I have this joy. And I can sing about it, you know. Right. Um, uh, there's a there's a song I forget who it's by. You know, it's um, I sing because I'm happy, and I sing because I'm free. For his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. And that's that's what I see in this, and I I just think it's beautiful. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, and for kids, mm -hmm. you know, this is one of those things that sometimes not everybody understands this, but you know, it it's really it, it, kids can't read. <laughs> Right, so like when you've got like a real young uh, child who, who, yeah, Bella is of course uh, a good example, but even older than Bella, right? Uh, you know, typically you learn to read, you know, five, six, seven years old. Um, you know, and before that you can't read, um, but you can absolutely sing, yeah. right? 
Um, the trick is, is you got to be able to teach them the words, right? And you can teach them words to uh, just about any song, really. Mm-hmm. Um, but the trick to it is, is you got to play it over and over again, yeah. like over and over and over and over yeah. and over again. Um, and, yeah, you know, perfect. I think as adults, we get into this habit of like, we want to hear something new and exciting because we've heard this 10,000 times while our kids haven't heard it 10,000 times yet. And also... Uh, they have no way of reading the words, uh, mm-hmm. and even a seven or eight year old might not be able to read fast enough uh, to keep up with the song, right? So even though they can read, they might not be able to read to keep up with the song as it's playing. Um, so uh, it's one of those things where you know you have to play the song, and kids actually love it when you play the song over and over again. I mean, think of, you know, I let it go. Okay, the let it go song from frozen right like everybody remembers like what was it like five years ago or something yeah. and they played it a billion times everywhere right everywhere was playing no it no one will ever forget it. right no one will ever forget that song everybody knows the words to the song right yeah. um and that is kind of what we should be doing with our kids for for hymns, for hymns. Uh, and it doesn't have to be hymns it can be you know contemporary christian music too i have i like both i, I both are fine but just you have to pick the you have to pick some a couple of songs and play them repeatedly yeah. so that the kids can learn it yeah. so that when they're in these these times where it, it's a troublesome and it, they don't really know they need to they need to actually be able to sing the songs mm-hmm. um from heart yeah. you know um from from I mean, memory honestly, we do the same thing with Bella even now um where we sing certain songs to her pretty frequently um like amazing grace be thou my mm-hmm. vision come thou found where if she is upset and you start singing to her she does come calm down a little bit right you know uh, it becomes starts, comforting yeah she recognizes it and says oh this is this is a comforting song yep you know and Even if she doesn't know the words, when she's you can't sing it <laughs> right but also when she's you know 80 right she's gonna still have that those words to that that yeah. song that's comforting to her she doesn't even necessarily know where she learned it you know um but so with your kids, make sure with your hymns, the songs, contemporary Christian music songs, whatever songs you're talking about, make sure that you let them memorize songs. Don't don't be so quick to to jump to the next song yeah. to uh, that they end up not memorizing any of them. Right? Yeah. You want them to memorize songs, and so you need to be able to play them all the time. Yeah. Um, so, and obviously, the simpler the song the less often you have to play it, right? So yeah. if it's a more complicated song, you have to play. So Christian contemporary music actually being somewhat more complicated in terms of how to sing it and everything, yeah. you actually have to play that a little bit more often uh, than a more, you know, like say a Sunday school song, which you could probably do a little bit less frequently and they'd still have it memorized. Yeah. Um, but um, the last thing we're going to talk about, I promise, I know it's getting a little long here, but like I said, there's a lot here and we had a long conversation about this. Uh, but uh, it's really important for our kids, and I frankly, I think for our adults too, that we def- define our terms, okay? And what I mean by that is, uh, in particular, there's a point where it says, you know, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And this is in verse 30, and then verse 31, and they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Uh, and we can talk about how children may have been included in the household, that's something good too. Um, but I wanna focus on that word believe, we say it so much, and it's just like any other word. Like if you say elephant like a hundred times in a row, then at some point you stop thinking about the actual animal, the elephant, right? And, and you don't even really, it doesn't even make sense what you're talking about. Believe is the same kind of thing. And a lot of times we just say it and nobody ever takes the time to explain to children, hey, the word believe, this is what it actually means, right? So let me describe that word. And when I say you know, believe and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Like, what does that mean? Believe. That's a pretty important word that you have to make sure you you describe, you know. Uh, and a lot of people think it means like something like agree with the description or something like, you know, it's like I just I know that that information is true. Yeah. Right. Acknowledge the, the truthfulness of information. Like that's what believe means. Um, that's not at all what, what believe means. Believe, just like faith right? means to trust. Okay. It's talking about trust. If I believe in somebody, I'm trusting in them, right? It's not that I'm acknowledging they exist, 
right? I don't believe, like, and when I say I believe in my wife, I don't mean, I'll, okay, I have acknowledged that she exists. Like, no, that's not what I'm talking about at all. What I'm saying is I trust her, right? Uh, I rely on her, right? Rely on is another good way to say it. But like, you know, I, I, she is uh, a person who has my trust, who is, who is deserving of my, of, you know, of that. And that's what believe means. Believe, faith, it means trust. It means rely on. Uh, they all kind of mean the same, the same thing. But if we don't define that for kids, then a lot of times they sit there and think, oh, you have to acknowledge their existence. And it's like, no, that's no. What you need to do is trust in them, right? Trust your life, trust your soul, your eternity with Jesus, right? And and rely on Him instead of relying on yourself. Uh, that's what believe means. Um, so make sure when you're teaching your kids uh, that you take the time to actually define those words for them and describe what it means. Um, so that's that's what we have there. So we're gonna go ahead and pause again. I want you guys to take some time and pray together. Uh, Pray especially about those highs and lows from earlier. Pray especially about this Bible verse, whatever's on your mind. Uh, But go ahead and pray together. Pause the video now. And welcome back. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Put your cell phones away. Uh, And um, we always do this thing with Bella where we kind of hold our hands. And then we pray together. And the idea is that this will help to have her understand the routine. So here we go. Ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah? Close enough. Yeah? That's close to amen. <laughs> yeah? Uh, so you can see there, even when she just kind of calmed down a little bit as you went to do that, at this age, that's about the best you could hope for. So uh, so that's pretty good. We like to think of her as praying with us when we did that. But I'm going to go ahead and close in our uh, our our blessing here. I actually just lost it. I had it pulled up, but uh, there we go. All right. So this one, uh, as you know, I've been bouncing around the Bible, but this one comes from first Thessalonians three verses 12 and 13. So kind of the end of verse, uh, first Thessalonians. So we'll go ahead and jump right in uh, and feel free to find your own blessings to do at home. If you don't like this one, you can pause it and end it here, do your own blessing. But if not, well, you can feel free to join into ours here too. All right. Are we ready? All right. May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon. Bye.